Hello, I'm Rod Lawton, and in this video, I'm going to show you how you can use Affinity Publisher to create a business card. Sooner or later, anyone who is serious about pursuing photography as a profession will need a business card. It doesn't matter whether you are a commercial photographer, an event photographer, or a fine art photographer building a portfolio. A business card will spread the word, get your name about, and show the people that you are a serious pro. This is our sample business card. It's plain and straightforward and gives potential contacts and clients all the information they need. And this video will show you everything you need to know about creating it. Affinity Publisher is the perfect tool for any kind of publishing work associated with your photography, especially if you're already familiar with Affinity Photo, because the interface and tools will be familiar and they are designed to work alongside each other. There are simpler business card design tools, including some you can use online, but the advantage of Publisher is that it does so much more. And in the rest of this Publisher series, I'll show you how to create a letterhead, web banner, flyer, leaflet, and even an ebook, all using the same building blocks of a standardized logo, font choice, and color scheme. So let's start from the basics with a brand new document. In photography, you would start with an image, but in publishing, you start from the document you want to create. This will include both the dimensions of the printed document and its print resolution. Affinity Publisher makes this easy with a wide selection of ready-to-go document templates. When you first start Publisher or use the File New command, you'll see this panel where you can click the New tab in the left sidebar and choose a pre-formatted document type. And there's what we need, a business card option just a little way down the list. You'll see from the information in the panel that this has specific dimensions and print resolution. This is a standard size for business cards, but you'll need to find a print outlet to print them for you. And if they specify slightly different dimensions, it's easy enough to change the size later. For now though, let's go with this. Before we click the Create button though, there's one more thing to check. Just above the list of templates are buttons for selecting a vertical or horizontal layout. Almost all business cards are in a horizontal format, so make sure that this is highlighted. Right, so now we have a blank document. Where do we start? If you have a logo, now's the time to add it. You can place it where you like. Some people place their logos centrally, for example, but we'll put ours at the top left, which is a pretty conventional position. So where does our logo come from and where is it stored? Well, first we created this logo for a fictional photographer using Affinity Designer. This is what it looks like in Affinity Designer, if you're interested. You can also design logos using free online tools and then download them, or you may have a logo already. With logos, it's best if they are in a so-called resolution independent format, like the EPS, Illustrator, or SVG format. These can scale up or down to any size without pixelating. You can use bitmap or raster images as long as the size is large enough so that they don't pixelate. And JPEG images are okay, but PNG files are better because they can include a transparent background so that they can be placed over other objects and colors. We won't go too far into illustration and vector tools at this point. Let's get back to our business card and how we add the logo. Now, this is an important point with Affinity Publisher. You can either embed graphics like this, or you can store them separately and link to them. If you use the file document setup command, you can check how your document is currently set up in the document tab and the image placement option. Embedding images might seem the simplest and most foolproof method, but linking has important advantages when you go on to create other documents using the same graphics. It stops your document files from becoming big and unwieldy, and it means that if you decide to modify your logo later, you only have to edit the linked file to have the new version available across all the documents where it's been used. So that's what we'll do here. We'll set the image placement option to prefer linked. The next step is to create a container for the logo. You can add logos directly to the document, but this gives a little more control. For this, we need the picture frame rectangle tool, which we use to drag out a roughly square frame in the top left corner of the business card. Now with this rectangle selected, we use the file place command and locate and select our logo. 
it's scaled automatically to fit the frame, but you can make adjustments. Below the frame is a left to right zoom slider to change the magnification of the image. And you can drag on the corners of the frame to change its size and the size of the graphic at the same time. If you move the mouse pointer over the graphic, you'll see a move gadget appear. And you can use this to move the logo around within the frame. The next job is to add the name of our photographer, contact details and the type of work done. So for this we need Affinity Publishers text tools and there are two to choose from, the frame text tool and the artistic text tool. What's the difference? Well, the frame text tool is designed for longer text. It's like having a word processor document within a frame and you can even link frames together to flow text over several pages. The drawback with text frames is you can't easily change the appearance of the text or resize the text quickly. For short blocks of text, where you want a bit more artistic control, use the artistic text tool. It's just less effective for longer text blocks over several lines. So let's make a text frame for the photographer's name by dragging out a text frame just to the right of the logo. If you start typing in this, you'll see text appear in the document's default font and size. Up on the top toolbar, there are menus for changing the font, the text size, the alignment and more, so it's easy to make changes. We've chosen the Avenir Next Condensed Font set to 12 points. The font you choose will depend though on your own taste and what's installed on your system. Below this, we've created another text frame, this time to contain the address details. We've set these to 8 point text and the first line of the address, also the business name, to bold. It is useful to choose a font with a much heavier bold form so that you've got a clear variation in weight in your text. Let's add another text frame to the right for essential contact information and rather than having to keep manually changing the text properties each time, you can simply cut and paste existing text frames and type over the text with the new information. It will inherit the same font size and style. We've also added a horizontal text frame at the bottom of the card for a brief description of the type of work undertaken. To finish, we've added horizontal lines or separators, if you like, between the photographer's name and contact details and above the list of work. This is quite easy to do. It shows off one of Publisher's integrated drawing tools. So for this job, we just need the pen tool, clicking once where we want the line to start and again where it should finish. And if you hold down the shift key for the second click, it will make the line perfectly horizontal. You will also see the publisher will automatically try to snap the ends of the lines to existing objects. And this is a really useful feature that helps keep your designs neat and aligned. Once you create the line, check the sidebar over on the right. The color palette will let you swap between editing the shapes, stroke and fill, though in this case it's simply lines, so there is no fill color, and we just need to make sure that the stroke gadget is selected for editing. The swatches palette displays all sorts of different colors, but we just want simple black, and there are black and white swatches separated out at the top. Finally, the stroke palette lets us change the width of the line, and we'll set this to one point. Incidentally, in photo editing, you might be used to working in pixels, but in publishing and design, it's normal to work in point sizes instead. Are we done yet? Very nearly. The last job is to make sure your business card design is ready for sending to your print service. You might print leaflets or flyers yourself, but printing business cards is really something best left to dedicated print bureaus. So first, check the size requirements of your print bureau. We don't have any objects up against the edges of the document to bleed off the edges. Uh, that's the publishing term if it's the deliberate design choice, but it's still a good idea to get the dimensions exactly right. If you use the file document setup command and click the dimensions tab, you can check the current dimensions against what your print bureau has asked for and enter the new dimensions if they are different. Then, when you close the window and go back to the document, you can move around the logo and text frames, if necessary, to reflect the different dimensions. Finally, you need to export your document in a format the Print Bureau can use, and for this you need the File Export command. Typically, the PDF format is used in publishing because it's scalable and won't pixelate and offers the best quality, but some services will also accept TIFF files or even JPEGs, 
as long as these have a proper print resolution, typically 300 dpi, the quality will be just fine. So that's an end-to-end -end project for creating and styling a business card and exporting it in a version that can be printed commercially. It was a simple project in design terms, but it introduces a number of key points in the Affinity Publisher workflow and for desktop publishing in general. It's just the start though, because this series will build on this to demonstrate more advanced publications you can create easily using the same basic building blocks. So stay tuned and see you next time.